In the world of Lean Six Sigma, we take a lot of measurements of our process. An MSA, or Measurement Systems Analysis, helps to make sure those measurements are accurate. And that's what this video is all about. Now, before we get started, let me mention that if you're interested in a free white belt certification course, you can access one at sixsigmasociety.org. So first, let's talk about why MSA is needed. So process improvement is driven by data. So our measurements of our process have to be accurate. We have to be able to trust them. So what if we spend $100,000 to fix a critical process and then realize we relied on bad data? We took measurements that weren't accurate at all. It's going to be a serious problem. I found this interesting. This is an article from the BBC about how fitness trackers are poor at measuring calories burned. So most fitness trackers are good at measuring heart rate, but poor at measuring calories burned. None of the devices in their study had an error rate below 20%. So if these measurements are off, um, it's um, causing bad decisions potentially to be made. So in our daily lives, people may use these watches to uh, make process-based decisions like how much to eat, uh, what types of food to eat, uh, how much to exercise, and so on. But if they uh, have bad data to make those decisions, could cause problems. So what's important here is to not blindly accept our measurements. We have to confirm them. And so measurement systems analysis is going to help us do that to make sure we're getting good measurements. So now let's talk about an overview of MSA. So measurement systems analysis helps us to identify variation caused by our measurement tools and methods. So here's an example. Let's say we measure a sample of screws and we notice a significant variation in length. The question becomes, is it actual variation? Are there really differences in the length of those screws? Or did we just get a bad measurement, a bad reading? Okay, so here, if here is our variation in screw length, one question would be, how much is actual variation? And how much is measurement error? We want to minimize the measurement error to make sure we can better understand and clearly understand the actual variation. Now, as we take measurements, as we measure things, there's influences that affect those measurements that we need to acknowledge. And so the measurement that we get, the reading that we get, is going to be affected by those influences. So here are some of those influences. Uh, and I'll use an example of tuning a guitar. That's a process, tuning a guitar. Now, the actual output, the measurements you're going to get, are going to be affected by the person, the operator, turn, uh, turning the pegs and then the procedures they're using. So who's actually tuning the guitar and what process steps are they using? And then it's also gonna be affected by the gauge or the tuner they're using and the reference value in that tuner. And then the environment as well. So if someone's trying to tune a guitar and the baby's screaming in the background, that may affect the reading that we're getting. And so we have to think about these influences and how they affect the measurements we get. Now we have a few objectives of MSA as we carry this out. We want precision to get a consistent measurement each time. And then we want accuracy, the average measurement to be close to the reference value. And the way to kind of think about this is, is visually looking at a target. So precision is you've, you've got sort of all the points clustered together, even if it's maybe not uh, close to the reference value. Accuracy is on average, you're close to the reference or the, the target you're seeking. If you get both of those things, you get these measurements close together and close to the reference value, whatever that is. So you're seeking for precision and accuracy. Now, precision and accuracy are sort of our high-level goals. We can dive deeper into specific goals within each of those categories, precision and accuracy. So with precision, we seek for repeatability, getting the same value using the same gauge and the same person, making sure it's repeatable. And then there's reproducibility, getting the same value using the same gauge, but different people. It's like if uh, you have a doctor measure someone's blood pressure over and over again. If that doctor gets relatively the same measurement, we've got repeatability. And uh, reproducibility would be if we have a doctor and a nurse getting the same measurement, different people. Now with accuracy, we seek for stability, getting accuracy over time. And then linearity, getting accuracy through the measurement range. So an example of this is we would hope that a thermometer, if we're uh, measuring temperature, is accurate in both low and high temperatures, so across the range. Then resolution, we're seeking for accuracy with varying levels of detail. 
And then something we're trying to minimize here is bias, being offset from the true value. So an example would be that all measurements are off by 5% or 10%. Okay, let's talk about these each in a little more detail, uh, starting with precision. So again, repeatability is getting the same measurement with the same appraiser, the same instrument, and the same part. It's like the doctor measuring your blood pressure using the same instrument. Then reproducibility is getting the same measurement with different people, like the doctor and the nurse, but using the same instrument to monitor your blood pressure. Now, if we see issues with what we call gauge R&R, gauge repeatability and reproducibility, some of our options are to try to calibrate or replace our gauge, to retrain our operators, or to update our procedures, making sure they provide enough detail and that they're actually accurate. The steps that we've listed in the procedure are correct. Okay, now diving a little deeper here into accuracy again with these four goals. We have linearity, which measures variation across the measurement range. We want to minimize that. So again, the temperature example is getting accurate readings in both low and high temperatures or low and high pressures if we're measuring pressure. And the stability is monitoring and minimizing variation across time, making sure we have stable measurements. And then resolution is variation in measurement detail. Now, if you take a look at these two gauges, the question you could ask is which tire gauge would provide more resolution? It would be that digital gauge. It's uh, much harder to see the detail in the manual gauge there. And then we look at bias and try to minimize that when the measured value is not the actual value. So it's like if you're driving a car and your speedometer always says you're 10 miles per hour over. It's got this bias built in. Okay, we want to make sure we minimize that. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the free Lean Six Sigma certification course at sixsigmasociety.org.